voiceover. Welcome, dear viewers, to Glitch in the Matrix Unbelievable Paranormal Stories. If you've ever wondered about the um, strange, the eerie, the downright weird, then you're in the right place. From inexplicable encounters to bizarre coincidences, from the paranormal to the glitches in the matrix, we explore it all. So um, is there really any difference between these two? Well, that's for you to decide. But one thing is certain, we love to talk about both. So sit back, relax, and prepare to dive head first into the rabbit hole of the unexplained. Our journey begins in Madrid, Spain with an unexpected encounter that's about to turn a normal day into something completely surreal. Years ago, standing on a sidewalk waiting uh, to cross the street in Madrid, Spain, my brother walked up to stand next to me. It wasn't my brother, it was some Spanish guy that was the exact same age as my brother and fully identical to him not even doppelganger status, um, like a mirror status. I didn't speak a word of Spanish. My brother was a literal ocean away and I just stood there totally gobsmacked. He looked at me and said, you're American, right? I said, you look just like my brother, said your brother must be pretty handsome then. And we laughed, crossed the street and went our separate ways. In this next story, a deleted user shares a chilling and intriguing memory. His father, in a desperate attempt to connect with his departed wife, set up a recorder on an unusual frequency in their home six months after his wife's death. The father asked out loud, what's my eldest son's name? After a brief pause, an uncanny voice responded with his son's name. The father was taken aback, but there was more to come. The user's mother had been diagnosed with a terminal illness. In a desperate attempt to prolong her life, the father invested in an obscure device called the Spooky Machine, which was believed to work on healing frequencies. Through the family privately scoffed at the idea, they let him carry on, hoping against hope. Two years after his wife's passing, the father attended a local church event featuring a spiritual medium. With no prior knowledge of the father or his family, the medium singled him out, accurately naming his deceased wife and acknowledging her refusal to undergo chemotherapy. The medium then astoundingly mentioned the spooky machine, the obscure device that only a handful of people knew about. He relayed a message from the wife, assuring the father that he could now let go of the machine. The son recounting this story was left baffled. How could the medium have known about their private lives? The possibilities were unnerving. Either the medium truly reached out to his mother's spirit or his father was weaving an elaborate tale. However, his father was not one to lie about such grave matters. This experience set the stage for a series of strange events that followed, leaving them questioning the boundaries between the living and the departed. Um, this reminds me of when I was walking somewhere in the town I live with my friend one dark and foggy evening. Approaching us from about 100 minutes away, there were two figures, the same height as me and my friend. I am considerably shorter than him. As they got closer, it appeared they were wearing the same colored clothes as us two. Once we got to within about 15 feet of each other, I realized the shorter figure was wearing the exact same red Volcom hoodie as me and the other figure had a gray turtleneck fleece on, just like my friend. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up. We all stopped and I remember saying, it's us. The other two figures did the same thing. Turns out it wasn't us or our doppelgangers, obviously, but two people we knew who just so happened to be wearing the same or extremely similar clothes and were exactly the same physical builds. 
We still laugh about it today because they thought exactly the same thing. Years ago, my friend dropped her cell phone behind the couch while she was on the phone and we looked everywhere for it. We took all the cushions out, moved the couch. Um, there wasn't a vent or anything behind it and we never found it and she just had to get a new phone. Her friend she was talking to said the phone just disconnected like when you lose service, LOL. Our next tale is both perplexing and terrifying, shared by a user named Short and Sad 4381. A few years back, this user was living with an ex and her mother in New York. One early morning, they woke up to the sound of the mother printing out papers. They were extremely thirsty and wanted to get a drink, but found themselves unable to move. They were pinned to the bed with only their right arm being mobile. The sound of the printer resonated in the room, but they couldn't call out for help. Terrified that they had re-injured their back, they decided to get attention by pulling themselves off the bed. They felt the rush of the floor coming towards their face, but just before they hit the floor, they found themselves back in bed. This happened again and again, each time the floor rushing towards them and then nothing. As they continued to attempt to roll off the bed, their other arm became numb and they started sweating profusely. It was getting harder to breathe. Finally, the printer stopped making noise. They opened their eyes to find their ex-girlfriend laying on their arm and chest, causing the numbness. Slipping out from under her, they sat up, questioning if all that had happened was a dream or reality. On the floor, they found a damp spot. They weren't sweaty anymore, so they assumed it was spilled water but when they checked the printer, they found countless copies of the same paper. The printer had run out of colored ink and the last few copies were black and white. They touched the damp spot on the floor and smelled sweat. The mother came in confused about the printer malfunction. The user quickly brushed off the episode, fearing she might think they were mentally unstable. They still don't know what to make of this incident. Was it a glitch in the matrix, sleep paralysis, or a series of coincidences? They're not sure, but one thing is certain, this experience left them questioning the nature of reality. Our next story is by a Reddit user who has since deleted their account. But before they left, they shared this chilling tale with us. In the early 2000s, the user's parents had just installed a separate building behind their house. This was to be used as a recording studio and a place for the user to escape when they needed some quiet time. They had set up a Radio Shack intercom system for easy communication between the house and the studio. One night, the user was engrossed in their music, headphones on, oblivious to the world outside their studio. Unbeknownst to them, their mother was frantically trying to reach them on the intercom. When the user eventually took a break and headed back to the house, they were met with their mother's wrath. She was furious, demanding an explanation for the user's screams for help that she had heard outside her bedroom window. The user was taken aback. They had been in the studio the whole time. Not once did they scream or call for help. As the confusion cleared, they realized that something strange had occurred. Their mother was adamant that she had heard her child's voice crying out in distress. Both were left shaken by the incident, especially since this wasn't their first encounter with the unexplainable. They had experienced strange occurrences in their current house and the one they lived in before. The user quickly turned off all their equipment and locked up the studio. They rushed back into the safety of their house, both shaken by the phantom distress call that echoed in the night. 
so dear viewers what do you think was it a case of mistaken identity or something far more mysterious share your thoughts in the comments below and if you're enjoying these spooky tales don't forget to like share subscribe and hit that notification button hard in our next story we delve into the eerie experiences of user primal k9 at the age of 16, Primal K9 had a best friend who lived just a stone's throw away from their house. This friend's house was a frequent hangout spot for them, despite the strange jokes about the house being haunted. The house was old and certain things just didn't work as they should, like the light switch in the upstairs bathroom. It was always on and the door always had to be kept closed. This was all taken lightly until one fateful night after watching the spine chilling movie, Paranormal Activity 2. Primal K9 and their friend had retired for the night. Somewhere around three to four in the morning, Primal K9 woke up and went to the washroom. As they were exiting the bathroom, they attempted to close the door quietly, not wanting to wake anyone. Um, they heard the click of the latch as they shut the door and let go of the handle, but to their sheer terror, the door ripped open as if they had shut it on someone's face. The door didn't swing open, it just ripped open and stopped abruptly. Startled and terrified, Primal K9 bolted back into their friend's room. This bizarre incident, especially on the night they had watched a horror movie, left them deeply spooked. The once jokingly haunted house now seemed to harbor a very real, unseen entity. What do you think, dear viewers? Was this a mere coincidence or was there something more sinister at play? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And remember, if you enjoy these eerie tales, like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated. In our next chilling tale, we follow the experience of Reddit user JerseyJoe83. At the tender age of nine or 10, JerseyJoe83 had an older brother who was notorious for stealing anything not bolted down. Suspecting that his brother was sneaking into his room at night, Jersey Joe 83 decided to catch him in the act. He had received a spy kit as a gift, which included an intruder detector, a simple clock attached to a tripwire. One night he set up this tripwire at his bedroom door, hoping to gather evidence of his brother's nightly intrusions. Hours later, he was jolted awake by the loud snapping sound of the tripwire being tripped. Expecting to find his brother caught red-handed, he sat up only to find an empty room. Just as he was about to dismiss it as the wind, um, his door slammed shut with a force that could chill one's blood. Now, this could have been explained away by a gust of wind but the tripwire had been pulled into the room as if something had entered and not left. Jersey Joe 83 sat up the rest of that night, his heart pounding in his chest. When he finally dared to open his door, he found the house silent and everyone sound asleep. Nothing else out of the ordinary happened after that night and he continued to live in that house until he was 21. Despite not believing in anything supernatural, this incident remains the one unexplained event in his life. Dear viewers, what do you think happened that night? Was it a trick of the wind, a prank gone wrong, or maybe just maybe something more eerie? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoy these spine chilling tales, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated. In this intriguing tale, we delve into the memory of Reddit user Dijanangan. During Dijanangan's childhood, they attended a sleepover at a friend's house. The basement was their designated sleeping area while the parents rested on the second floor. They had a system in place to avoid waking the parents. One of them would station themselves at the top of the basement stairs uh, in the kitchen 
to listen out for any noise they might be making. It was during Dijon and Gown's turn at the post that an unexplained incident took place. A noise caught their attention and they crept down the hallway towards the back staircase to investigate. There was a half bath off the kitchen, the door slightly ajar and light spilling out from within. Peeking through the crack, Dijon and Goni saw a young woman. She appeared to be in her 20s, with wet-looking 80s styler ringlets in her blonde hair. She was dressed in ordinary clothes and there was nothing ghostly about her appearance. However, her expression was one of concern and fear, and Dijon and Gon felt an immediate sense of having intruded on something they weren't supposed to witness. Believing her to be a real person, um, they rushed back to the basement and warned their friends to hide, convinced that an intruder was in the house. However, after a few minutes of tense silence, the other girls began to doubt Dijon and Gon's story. There was no one else in the house except them and the parents. The incident was soon dismissed as a prank, but Dijon and Gone couldn't shake off the memory of the woman's frightened gaze. To this day, Dijon and Gone is unsure of what they saw that night. Was it a hallucination, a dream, or was there indeed a mysterious woman in the house that night? The incident remains an unsolved mystery, a chilling memory from a childhood sleepover. What's your take on this, dear viewers? Do drop your theories in the comments section below. And as always, if you're enjoying these eerie tales, do like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated. In our next chilling tale, we bring you a story from Reddit user inboard32. It was an ordinary evening when an 11-year-old inboard32 fell asleep while watching a movie in the sitting room. Upon waking up, they found the house eerily quiet and empty. The family car was missing, leading them to um, assume that the family had gone out for dinner without disturbing their peaceful slumber. With nothing but time on their hands, they decided to pass the hours on their laptop, waiting for the return of their family. However, as the clock ticked past midnight and there was still no sign of anyone, worry began to set in. They tried to call their family, but all the phones seemed to have mysteriously vanished. Inboard 32 finally succumbed to sleep at 4 a.m., hoping to wake up to a house filled with their family's presence. The next morning, as they sat down for breakfast, their family returned, um, carrying their two youngest sisters, who were fast asleep. The family confirmed they had gone out for dinner, leaving Inboard 32 alone. But something wasn't quite right. It was dark outside and the clock read 9 p.m., not a.m. This was just the beginning of the confusion. As they shared their dream of being left alone with their mother, she looked at them with a concerned expression and stated, we had dinner together, honey. What's even more unsettling is that Inboard 32 only has one younger sister, not two. So, what happened during those missing hours? How did a vivid memory of being alone end up being a fabrication? And who was the phantom sister they saw their parents carrying? Share your thoughts and theories in the comments section below. And remember, if you enjoy these spine-tingling tales, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos.